and then heat it up. There's something about the reaction in here. All right, what do you need? You need onions. You need garlic. Yeah. You need tomato paste. Paste, not sauce. This is the small can. You'll need five to six of these to make a full pot. Or you use three of the larger ones. You can use crushed tomatoes. I like using the 28 ounce, 28 ounce can of Contadina or Progresso, or if you want to buy the big can of Marzano tomatoes from Italy, they're great. And then you need your spices. And you need celery. Excuse me, not celery. Parsley. You could throw celery in if you wanted. Some people actually use carrot. I don't use carrots in mine. Also, Pecorino Romano cheese, or you can use Parmigiano Reggiano. One pound of ground round, four or five lengths of Italian sausage. You can use spicy, you can use mild, you can use whatever you want. Remember, this is a base sauce. If you didn't put a lot of stuff in, put some cream in, you'd have a bowl of eggs. So let's get going. <laughs> First, you cut up the onion. Get a big yellow onion, white onion, it doesn't matter. If once it's cooking, you're not going to be able to tell the difference. But you need it for your base. Remember, we're going to be layering up all of the flavors. As it's going, as soon as it turns translucent, then you throw your garlic in. Because if you throw your garlic in with your onions, you're going to burn the garlic and you're going to have a burnt taste in your sauce. Salt and pepper. Got a salt and pepper. I like using my pepper mill and coarse salt. You can use kosher, you can use sea salt. Very, very, very good. Then you get your cans of tomatoes. The paste is, the relationship is three to one. One can of paste to three cans of hot water. Don't put cold water in because it reduces the temperature in your pot. It takes longer for your sauce to cook. But first you throw in the meat. The ground round goes in room temperature. And I don't care what the food Nazis say about disease or whatever, because by the time this stuff cooks down, there's nothing living in it. <laughs> the sausage, what I like to do with about four or five lengths of sausage, I like to cut them up into about pieces like this, and I fry them on the side. I reserve one sausage, I peel it, throw it in with the round round, and it'll add a little texture, a little more spice to the sauce. Mm. Then you put your tomato paste in. Now if you're using the big cans, the ones a little bit larger than these, you only need three. But here I found it's five to six of these. Again, depending on how thick you want your sauce and how high up the side you're gonna go. After you get that going, and one thing about paste that I like using over sauce, you can control the flavor. Think about that. Sauce you pour it in, it's soft. It doesn't really have a lot. If you've got to add water to it, you're going to dilute it. With paste, you can actually thicken or thin your sauce by the amount of water you put in with it. It's a little chemistry thing. <laughs> I never took chemistry in high school, but I figured out when watching the food. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you get your sauce up? And it's in here. Now we start adding the spices. Now what I like to use is oregano. I like using sweet basil. I like throwing a couple bay leaves. I like using red chili pepper flakes. Yeah. If you like it, as the Italians say, arigato. It's hot. And my mom's secret sauce maker. Brown clove or real cloves. I mean the full cloves. Use a little bit, it goes a long way, but it adds just a little bit of spice in there that you can taste, but it doesn't overpower the sauce. Now, what I like to do when I'm using the sauce, or making the sauce, is I take the lid off. What I got here is I got the basil. And what I do is I put in about that much. Okay? Now, you can put in as much or as little as you want. Remember, with dry, herbs, they go a long way. Then what I did is, I grind it up over the pot. Again, food Nazis, too bad. It's going to get cooked, okay? You grind it up in your hand. What it does, it helps release some of the oil and the heat from the heat, and it gets into it. You do that with all your herbs, with the exception of the bay leaf. Nobody likes eating ground bay leaves, trust me. Because you're going to take them out at the end. Again, red pepper flakes, how hot do you want it, how mild do you want it. The other thing I like to use is Pecorino Romano cheese. Now what I use is about a quarter to a half a cup. 
and I used the fine grade on the four-sided cheese grater. In Italian, we used to call it the Rata Garage. In fact, I was in high school before I found out it was called the four-sided cheese grater. <laughs> now, going forward, you can either add or subtract what I'm going to tell you to use. Anyway, you put in about a quarter, half a cup. It just depends on how much you want. It adds a certain smoothness to the sauce. It actually mellows it out, gives it a great flavor. The next thing I like to throw in is the parsley. Now you have your choice. You have the Italian flat leaf parsley, or you can use the crinkle edge. What I do is when I go to Vaz or something, is I sneak a piece. And if flat leaf tastes really, really strong, that's what I use. If it doesn't, then I use the crinkly leaf. And I like to put it in while I'm making the sauce, not at the end. I mean, who wants to look at green stuff on top of your red sauce, right? At the end, so I put it in the beginning. <laughs> when I'm making the sauce, I like to use mushrooms. Now, there's a rule about don't wash your mushrooms. Well, any mushroom that comes out of horse poop, I'm washing it. Okay? Because that's how they culture it here in California. Back east, they do it a little bit differently. So I wash mine off, and I use a little green scraper, you know, little felt jobbies, whatever you want to call them, and I scrape off whatever's on there because I don't want any horse poop in my sauce, okay? There's a trick when you use you the grater, because I use the grater a lot of times when I want to get a nice, thin slice. As you're slicing the mushroom, a lot of people are real worried about getting cut, and it's a good thing. But what I do is I put the mushroom right here. So when I'm going down, I'm holding it. As I get down, I keep pulling my fingers back, so pretty soon it's away from the cutter. And of course, you get right down to the edge. You be real careful and how it goes. Good red wine. Got to have wine. <laughs> if you like wine, use a good wine. Maybe a half a cup at the most. But it'll add color. It'll add flavor. And remember, you're going to be cooking this for two hours. Think about that. Two hours, you're going to be cooking the sauce. If you start cooking any longer than that, you're going to get a burnt, bitter sauce. Now, about every 20 minutes, what you want to do is you want to go and stir the sauce from the bottom up. In the meantime, remember you throw it in your, your brown sausage earlier. Mix it up, bring it up, and when you start getting a little film on top, like a little bit of oil, a little bit of grease or whatever, this is what this is for. Save a can. Scoop out the oil, put it in the can. You don't want it to be really oily. And at the end, you'll be able to know your sauce is ready you'll be able to smell it through the whole house because it's permeated the whole house. What I like to do is get a little piece of Italian bread sticking in there, blowing up, it's going to be hot. And that's when you know your sauce is ready. Mr. Toast.